Welcome to our Unconventional Career video series. My name's Laura Appleby-Jones and I'm looking forward to hosting the conversation this morning. A little bit about me, I'm a co-founder and partner of Fifth Frame, which is a boutique management consulting business in Australia that focuses on improving organisational performance by putting people at the heart of business, aligning them to purpose, strategy and creating an organisational culture that brings all that together. I'm excited to share some experiences with my um, panellists here this morning um, as co-founders as well, and I'll introduce them in a moment. But before I do, I just thought I'd frame up a little bit about the, the focus of the conversation this morning. It's not unusual for business school students to, to start their journey into the workforce with a fixed idea of what their path might be. A linear role from graduating into a graduate role in an organisation and then you know, progressing through careers from that point. But now there's absolutely another path and we're seeing more and more people following their passions and creating unconventional and meaningful careers for themselves. Um, I, those, both of those experiences certainly resonate for me. I started my career of in a big four consulting environment after coming out of uh, a psychology degree. And after spending a good decade in that environment, I decided there was a different way to forge what I wanted to do to step out to found Fifth Frame. So the focus for this morning is really to understand and explore founders at work and the different dynamic and uh, journeys that they've each gone on this morning. So as I said, I'm really excited to, to share their stories and hear from them with you. Um, the three entrepreneurs I'd like to introduce, um, welcoming Will Edwards, who is the founder of Archie Rose Gin Distillery, Craig Blair, co-founder and manager of Airtree Ventures, and Nicole Bushkovich, the co-founder and CEO at Advocate. We're in great hands with some really dynamic and different journeys that they've gone on this morning. So I'd love to hear them just introduce themselves and tell us a bit about their current ventures. Why don't we start with you, Craig? Sure, sure, yeah. Um, thank you. Um, well, I, I, as you said, I'm now the... Uh, managing partner of Airtree Ventures. Um, we're a venture capital firm. We back software founders from the likes of Canva and Go One and um, Athena. Um, we've got 55 companies we've backed and a team of 25 people, and it's the best job in the world. Um, and prior to that, I've actually founded a few startups myself. So I've been on the other side, I've got scars on, on my back from that. Mm -hmm. And I've dabbled in um, strategy consulting and investment banking and my mum would be so proud I'm here with an unconventional career <laughs> thing. I think so, so I think I've made it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Nicole. Um, yeah, so um, I started in Sydney Uni, obviously, with a uh, degree in media and comms and um, did a bit of time working in um, politics and government relations. Um, I've worked for ministers and MPs here in New South Wales and also on the other side of the fence trying to influence change from the outside in. Um, and now run Advocate, um, a software company that specialises in data and solutions for people who are out there on the coalface talking to government, um, trying to affect change, influence policies, um, legislation, and um, yeah, look forward to telling you more about it today. Yeah, awesome. And yeah, I founded Archie Rose Distilling Company in 2014, um, which at the time was the first distillery, in, not the first, sorry, the only distillery in Sydney. And we make a range of spirits, but we're probably most well known for our gin, single malt whiskey and rye malt whiskey. Um, at uni, I did a, a Bachelor of Commerce and then a Master of Management, and then spent a little bit of time at Deloitte in consulting before going off to make hard liquor. And yeah, I mean, as Craig said, you know, I think it's the best job in the world. And yeah, over that period, we've you know, grown an incredible team and made some super innovative products and yeah, learned a hell of a lot. Yeah, awesome. So I'd love to hear all about how you kicked off that journey out of the graduate environment and into the world of work that you currently exist in. Um, you know, you've all mentioned some of the careers you've had in the past. Um, I'd love to explore what were some of those early careers, corporate careers that you had. Um, and which of those past roles you think had the greatest impact on, um, on your early career? Why don't we start with you, Will, given you mentioned that you kicked off your career at Deloitte. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so, I mean, look, I've only had one corporate job. <laughs> so when I was at uni, I worked as a labourer a bit and I worked in my uncle's jewellery shop um, just to make some money. But yeah, my only corporate job was, was Deloitte. And I think the thing, just to give it a bit of context, is I had no idea what I wanted to do. So, you know, I came out of school, didn't know what I wanted to do, into commerce, pretty general business degree, full of, I'm sure, a lot of people who aren't quite sure what they want to do, right? Finished that into the master's. I don't want to say exclusively for this reason, but still without a clear direction. Um, and then even into the consulting job for, you know, a similar reason, albeit I'm not sure you can call that a reason. 
And I really enjoyed the time there. You know, I, I thought the time there was fantastic. I thought the work was super interesting. I love jumping around from business to business to business. I love the fact that as a grad, which I think is pretty, pretty commonplace in consulting, the level of access you got to the clients you're working for was, you know, six levels above what you'd be able to access if you, you know, if they knew how green you were. Um, I really enjoyed it. I just, for me, it, it wasn't tangible enough for me and you didn't often get to see the outcome of your work because you're often in there working to fix a problem and once you came up with whatever the solution was, they could execute. They didn't need to pay you to actually do the, do the execution. Um, and so, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And I think I gained a lot from just understanding, and I know it was only one example, but just understanding how a big, established, successful business operates. You know, the good stuff and the bad stuff. Because some of those processes are incredible, right? And we've tried to take them and scale them down to, to, to something that's going to work for us. And it gives you a lot of structure, particularly in the early days when you just have no idea what the hell you're doing. But then also there's, there's so much bureaucracy and aversion to risk, which then builds in process that just doesn't let you do what you need to do as a business and, and not die. Um, and so I think it's super valuable. And, and I probably didn't realize how valu valuable it was when I went and start Archie Rose. I've sort of, uh, realize that value over time. But yeah, I mean, that's the only thing you've ever had, so. Yeah, I can certainly relate. I think the, the management consulting environment in a big organization certainly teaches you some really core skills that help you, you know, set up your own businesses in the future. For me, going into consulting, really understanding how to unpack and solve a problem was a yeah. core foundational skill that I took from there. Nicole, tell us a bit about your early corporate career and, and what are some of the skills that you, you know, picked up in then um, in those days that have helped you now? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I think Will mentioned the word bureaucracy before. I spent um, almost six years working um, for uh, politicians and, and, and um, government stakeholders. And um, there was certainly plenty of bureaucracy um, and um, having to navigate through, um, I guess, people and issues um, was something that uh, I had to learn pretty quick. Um, it was my first job out of uni, um, jumping straight to work for an MP, um, having not really studied political science, um, having not really been um, politically active up until then. It was really just sort of jumping into the deep end and thinking, wow, I've got this great opportunity yeah. to really expose myself to something that is similar to what I've done before with the media and comms, but also quite different. And um, uh, it was quite a scary thing for me to do because um, not knowing the subject matter and, and studying political science, it was quite a um, uh, sort of scary thing to, to jump into. But um, my dad always said, look, just say yes until you have to say no. So I took that opportunity and I really had to be quite um, thick skinned and resilient and really having to just ask a lot of stupid questions, even if I was worried about, you know, how they would make me look. And so I think um, you know, diving into, um, you know, a, a, a job that was quite different to what I studied um, really did teach me to be resilient and it taught me to um, not be fearful of asking silly questions and, um, you know, really just trying to get out there and, and learn the ropes and being quite fearless, I guess, in that approach. So that's probably what I took out of my first years outside of uni. Yeah, awesome. I love that you know, say yes until you have to say no, that concept, it really drives a lot of entrepreneurs nowadays. Craig, you have had a very interesting career path. You spent some time in strategy consulting and you know, the, in the tech industry as well and now in venture. What have you learned along the way? What's Yeah, so I, I've actually had a few buckets. I've had a an initial, I graduated with an engineering degree. Um, so I was an engineer, I was a construction engineer for I don't know, six, seven, eight years, um, six, seven years, I'd say. And then I have had the strategy consulting and the investment banking experience after I did an MBA at INSEAD. And I think the engineering process, I didn't know at the time, was I, I worked on large projects like the Anzac Bridge and the third runway. Um, and I was a 22 year old managing 100 people trying to build things that I didn't really know how to build, right? So you had to fake it till you make it. Which is a, yeah. which is one thing in the software business, another thing on a bridge, yeah. like you know. <laughs> so so no I was just standing here. Um, you have to. I, I learn how to get shit done, like yeah. literally build things. Like we talk about building businesses, building a thing is that yeah. you know it starts with a hold the ground and your things go wrong and you have to have to adapt plans and you have to 
deal with conflict and all the things you do in building a business or you, know, you build when you build a bridge or a, a building. So I think getting shit done and <coughs> being a project manager um, was, was my first lesson. Um, um, and then I guess the consulting experience similar. It was like, you know, how to, probably for me, understanding markets, understanding how to assess markets, um, understand how organisations behave within those markets. And that's, that's really use, been useful for me when I've started businesses. I've looked for opportunities in markets and I've now invested in businesses. That's a, um, and the investment banking experience, I was at Macquarie Bank for a brief time. It was really, I mean, they are the geniuses, geniuses at opportunistic invest, investing. They're real opportunists within a really tight framework. And um, I think there's a sort of dark side of that, but there's a really good side of that. If, and I think you know, just trying to be sort of um, interesting and interested in how opportunities arise and taking them as Macquarie Bank does was a pretty, pretty good um, life lesson. Yeah, awesome. One thing that I love that was common to all of your reflections was this idea of not necessarily faking it till you make it, but being okay to learn on the job and embracing that. Um, a lot of people as they start their career expect that they need to have all the answers right up front. Um, and that's obviously a bit different when you're jumping into a startup world. What are some of your reflections for those students that are thinking about entering into startup versus a traditional career path? What would you say, um, you know, is there advice that you would give them? You know, do you think there's relevance in having industry experience before entering into that startup environment? I think having, I'll jump in. Um, I think having industry experience is um, really helpful if you, if you can get it. Um, it just means that there's so much less guesswork once mm -hmm. you're actually in the business, um, trying to find product market fit, um, solving problems for your customers. If you already you know, were a customer or you've got that familiarity with the industry, it can just make that journey a little bit um, easier. Um, for those who are risk averse as well, um, like I was having, um, having a bit of a, um, a career and something to sort of pay the bills while you dip your toe into an idea or a project is also um, a really potentially good way of going um, about you know jumping into startup land. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think it definitely helps, but I don't think it's a requirement. And I think that, you know, as has been said a few times already, just because you, <laughs> this is too gentle a way to put it, right? Like just because you don't know how to do something doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Otherwise, you'll never do anything. And it's not just because you don't know how to do it. You'll, you, you, there's no chance you'll know how to do it. There is 0% chance you know how to do it, right? And so if you took the approach of not doing it because you don't know, you're just not going to do anything. And so I think if you, if you can get industry experience in a way that is part of your journey and it's, it's not like a conscious decision of, oh, no, I won't do this now because I need to go get industry experience first, you know, that's, that's, that's fine. If, it's, if it is a conscious decision of I'm not going to do this now, I'm going to go get industry experience first and then I'll do it. I've just had too many conversations where that's just the start of a very slippery slope. You know, it's like, okay, I'll do that. And then, oh, but you know, COVID, or, I'm not, I can't do it. I'll just wait till COVID recovers a bit, you know? Oh, look, I've just had a kid or whatever. I won't do this now, I'll wait till. You can't, you can't, well, I mean, look, I feel you can't live like that, but if we stay on topic, you can't start a business like that. It doesn't work, right? You'll just never do it. And that's the thing. I've, t I've heard too many great ideas that never happened because people just didn't do it. And just, just do it, mate. Anyway, so I think the other thing too, and this is sort of reflecting on my journey, is that I had no experience. I mean, look, I poured some beers, but I had no experience in hospitality. I didn't have a background in chemistry. I didn't have a background in engineering. I'd never worked in a distillery. I'd never worked in a food manufacturing facility. I'd never, I'd never done anything, right? But this is what I loved, you know? So I loved cocktail culture. You know, I had little oak barrels at home. I'd put things in and see what would happen. You know, I, I did homebrew whenever I could. I made the cheapest cider known to man. This is what I like to do, right? And so I think the alternative, it's not an alternative, it doesn't replace it, but an alternative source of some experience in an odd way specific to my journey is just having what you're super passionate about become what you end up doing. And the beauty of that at the very beginning is that to a degree, you're your own customer. And that eliminates a lot of uncertainty. Now, I'm not saying it's the best way to view it, but for the first, I reckon, two years, most of the stuff that I wanted to do was because I thought it was cool 
and I was banking on enough, enough other people in the market thinking the same way I did. And so effectively, we tested stuff against initially myself and then ourselves as our own target market. Um, I'll stop there because I know I'm going off on a rant. <laughs> but yeah, I think industry experience, if you can get it on the journey and it's not holding you up, absolutely, super valuable, but it's not essential. Yeah, I, I think it's it's very dependent on the person, to be honest. I mean, I think, uh, reflect when I graduated the university, you would never have had a panel like this. You, you know, it was frowned upon to go and do, you know, do what you've done. Well, so, yeah, you had to go and get a proper job. So that's really encouraging that now that you can actually not even go to uni, by the way, <laughs> and do this thing. So, um, but for me, I, I've noticed a few things. I think industry experience is, if you know what you want to do early, then go and do it. Great. But very few people are lucky enough to do that. Most of us fumble around for a while. And for me in particular, I had to grow up. Like I just wasn't mature enough to even know what I wanted. And I still like too many things. So I'm, I'm not a person who is all in on you know, 32 red. I like to have four or five things, and that's just my makeup. And so I think if I had to try to, you know, something at 19, 20, 21, I would have been drinking the gin. You know, I, would, I, would, I would have done the wrong thing. And, <laughs> And so I think I needed to grow up and yeah. be mature and you know, make a few mistakes before I did it for the real. For real. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I, I agree with that. And the, from my perspective, when I left as a graduate, particularly my undergraduate degree, I didn't know that management consulting or people-based consulting existed. So it was really important for me to kind of get that exposure and see what other alternatives were out there to, to grow into it. Um, awesome. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm.